can we split the Seattle and LA games? I don't see it. Meaning, can you win one, lose one? Yes, I think you can. I, the, the Rams are three and one, but the Rams have not beaten a lot of good teams. I know the Eagle, or the, uh, the 49ers just lost to the Eagles, but the Eagles got obliterated by the Rams. And so the Rams have beaten some pretty bad football teams overall. But, uh, Seattle's a whole different ballgame. Seattle's the best team in football. And a lot of people hated that comment on Monday that I made. Watch the film. The Chiefs are not that great. Can't, uh, okay, let me say that again. Chiefs are a good football team, best in the AFC. They're not better than Seattle. They would have lost to Cam Newton and the Patriots if Cam Newton had, had been in there. I would take Seattle every day of the week. So can you split the Seattle games? Eh, right now, I'm not feeling so confident. Can you split the LA Ram games? Yes, 100%. I think they win here in two weeks, especially since a lot of guys will be healthy, a.k.a. Raheem Mostert there for week six. Next question here comes from Spaticus. Spaticus? I said that name. Mullins isn't reliable much, but we had to start him. But we have to start him, and if he isn't going to do anything well in the drives, then defenses need to make plays. So here's the deal. First off, we, talk, we just talked about it. It looks like Mullins won't start because Garoppolo is going to start. And if Garoppolo can't start, then it looks like Kyle Shanahan will name the starter closer to game time. So whether it's Beathard or Mullins, we'll have to go ahead and wait and see. I think right now, though, if, you're, if you had to pick between a backup quarterback, they would probably start Beathard just because they like what he saw late in that Eagle game. I still think Mullins is a better quarterback. They just had a rough night on Sunday Night Football. He was good against the Jets and Giants, but – it's a rough night against a, a pretty good Eagles defense. He's, he's not reliable. That's why he's a, back, a backup quarterback. But I think right now, Garoppolo's training to play, and he should be the starter on Sunday if he is 100% healthy. And it looks like he's going to be pretty darn close to that. I'll leave the question up, up to you guys, though. Who would you rather have? Let's just say Garoppolo can't go. Uh, again, I don't expect him not to, but let's say that he can't go. Who would you rather start at quarterback? That NM down below for Nick Mullins. Type CJ down below for uh, for CJ Beathard. I want to see what you guys are thinking right now. Beathard was good late in that football game. Scoring drive. I mean, you give him the football there with more time. He probably wins the football game. Just ran, ran out of time there on Sunday night. I'm curious what you guys think in terms of this one. Mullins versus CJ Beathard. Does it matter, though? Because Garoppolo is coming back. He's going to play on Sunday, and he's hopefully going to light it up against the LA Rams. Here's another question coming up here. Hashtag 49ers. Here comes David, who says, Say if four comes back healthy, should we trade him for a mid or late third or fourth round pick next season? Should we move McGlinchey to right guard and Brunskill to right tackle? A lot of questions here. First off, as you know, IR is where we currently land with D4. He's on the uh, short-term injury reserve. He's out for the next two weeks, technically, with low back pain is what they're saying right now. Whether that's like, you know, your grandma hunched over with low back pain or like swelling in the lower back. Not exactly sure what's going on with him, but it's enough to land him on IR. So he's going to be done again for the next couple of weeks. Now, can you, should, should they trade him? Maybe he's on the final year of his deal, costing $14 million. You'd love to save that money, but you're not going to get a third, round, third, third or fourth round draft pick for him. Like, let's just be honest. You're not going to get a third or fourth round draft pick for a guy like D Ford. Probably a late fourth or a fifth round draft pick is more like it. So is it worth it? No. If he comes back healthy, I want him on the football team because they need pass rushers right now. Because Anza's gone, Nick Bosa is gone. They need people to get sacks. Not able to do so against Carson Wentz on Sunday. I would like him to stay a 49er unless someone wants to give him a much better deal. And I just don't see that happening. So good question. I just do not see it happening. This is an interesting question from Orlando Ventura. So the 49ers get Julio Jones. Okay. Disclaimer, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I know a lot of you guys who follow the show know that. I live in Atlanta, Georgia. I cover the Falcons here uh, for one of the local radio stations. I'm very plugged in with the Atlanta Falcons, the training camp, all that sort of thing. I'll tell you this. From an insider who knows stuff, there is zero buzz about trading Julio Jones. There is there is no buzz about trading for Julio Jones. With that being said, the Falcons are on four. The Falcons were to drop the Sunday matchup against Carolina and then lose two weeks from now. If they get like an 0-6, 0-7 scenario, they might blow everything up. And then Julio Jones could be fair game. The question and problem is going to be, can you afford Julio Jones, who's the highest paid wide receiver in the National Football League? And would you want to give up a first or second round draft pick? I don't see it happening. Would you love Julio in a Niner uniform? Yes. Is it going to happen? Boy, like a 1%, 2% chance that the Falcons need, need to lose more for that to happen. But I think they win on Sunday against Carolina and get their season kind of back on schedule there, sitting at 1-4. and four. Dopey one Bailey. Should we try and make a trade for J.J. Watt? Right, is Houston going to trade J.J. Watt? No. I saw a recent uh, article from Pro Football Focus today mentioning that Watt and Watson are going to be the two players they build the new Texans around after firing Bill O'Brien due to his 0-4 start. So it looks like he's not going to be available. He's a little old, too, right? I remember, J.J. Watt has had a lot of uh, injury issues, especially lower body issues there in Houston. He's a great football player, an even better human being. I love him on the 49ers, but he's too old. I'd rather draft somebody instead of spending that much money in a draft. Of Plus, as we just said, and has been reported, Texans not looking to go ahead and trade him, so I highly, highly doubt it. Now, trade deadline is week eight. 
and we're at week four. This is technically week five. So things, if, if a trade were going to happen, which I know Niner fans are hungry for trades, so if, if it were to happen, we'll cover it here on the 49ers report. So what do you do? You see it right there. Big red subscribe button. Click it. Click the notification bell as well. That way you're notified, right? If you have the notification bell click, you probably got a notification on your little cell phone saying, hey, you know, Thomas is live. And then you click on it, and now you're having the best night of your life, right? So make sure you have the notification bell clicked. That way you get nonstop coverage here on what is, I'm calling it right now, the best 49 ers channel on YouTube and one of the best 49 ers places to get all your information in the entire interweb. Okay, next question here comes from Jose. Jose says, who do we sign for Nick Bosa's place for a one-year contract? The answer is you don't. There's nobody out there. I, I looked because I was thinking about this. I said, all right, free agents. Who can you go get? The only free agent that would make semi, uh, maybe a little bit of sense is a Clay Matthews, but Clay Matthews is ancient. And the reason he's not signed right now is probably an indication that not a lot of teams want him because there are teams that could use pass rushers. So Matthews is it. I don't see a lot of other names. They're going to roll with what they have and essentially hope that D4 comes back healthy and ready to go and hope that Deion Jones, former practice squatter, former first-round draft pick, practice squatter, comes out and is able to continue to uh, assume the role of Nick Bosa, even though, of course, Bosa is way, way better. Next question here comes from Addy Smarts. Tank for Trevor. Goodness gracious. Oh, man. I, yeah, I, I asked at the beginning of this good question. This is a terrible question. The Niners are 2-2, two and two, and the only reason they're 2-2 two and two is, if, is because they've had injuries. You really want the Niners four games in to tank for a quarterback, and then, think, let's think about this, they tank for a quarterback, they draft Trevor, let's just say, you got to be the first overall pick, by the way, and there are a lot of 0-14s right now. Let's just say it happens. Now you have Jimmy Garoppolo, who you just paid a ton of money to, and you got to trade him for what? A fifth or a sixth or a fourth? Who's going to give you a third-round draft pick for Jimmy G? Nobody, because that's not how it works. No, no. Addy Smarts is Addy Dumb. That does not make any sense. They're not going to do tanking for Trevor. I'm sorry. Jimmy Garoppolo is just fine. He's, he's, he's absolutely just fine. If you're healthier, the Niners are 3-1. and one. Jimmy Garoppolo plays on Sunday night. They probably beat Philadelphia. He just was injured. It just happens, okay? Move on. Move on. I don't like that. Let's see. David Vioma, friend of the show with a super chat. David, you're the man. I appreciate you. Says, biggest liabilities on both sides of the ball for the Finns game. Biggest li li liabilities right now have to be defensive end. We just talked about it. They need pass rushers. Now, Kinlaw and Armstead are having decent seasons. I'll argue Armstead looks a little worse than he was last year. Last year was great. This year kind of, eh, but you need to see someone on the outside getting to the pass rush. You need Deion Jones. I know he's a practice squad guy. We can't expect much, but we need more from you, man. I mean, Ziggy Yonza going down is a brutal injury. So the DNs have got to get home. They cannot let uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick have time to sit back and carve up the uh, the uh, defensive ends. And then biggest liabilities right now on the offensive side of the football, if Garoppolo doesn't play, it's quarterback. If he does play, it's running back. They miss Raheem Mostert. They miss Kevin Coleman. I'm a massive Jerk McKinnon fan. You know this. Jeff Wilson Jr., Michael Hasty, right? Woo, very exciting. They're not as good as Raheem Mostert. Mostert probably not going to play on Sunday. They need him back sooner rather than later. He's probably the biggest reason why the offense has not been – as dominant as you had seen in, in, in certain times during the Kyle Shanahan era. Good question, though, and a good little statement there. Appreciate you. Who needs to step up? Who is it? Who needs to step up against the Dolphins? I have my answer. I want to know what, what it is from you guys. If Mostert can't play, and the odds are Mostert's not going to play, because everything I've heard is that he's probably not going to be good to go dealing with that knee injury, limited in practice, but odds are not going to go. You need Jared McKinnon to have a big day. I, I mean, McKinnon's been great catching the football. We need a big running day. No, no more 10 for 50. We need 15 for 95 yards rushing and then three catches for 35 yards. You need more yards, all right? I say Jerick McKinnon on offense. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Seeing a lot of comments right now popping up on my phone as I am also in the comment section. Fun fact, I'm just kind of hanging out there. I'm not typing anything, but I'm reading your guys' comments right now. Got two screens rolling right here, so I want to hear and see what you guys are thinking in terms of uh, – who needs to step up against the four against the against the Dolphins on Sunday, which again should be an easy win, but at the same time, as we've seen so far, and not a lot of easy wins for the 49ers so far this season. Let's see. Someone says Ayuk. Ayuk, yeah, I mean Ayuk makes sense. Trenches, McKinnon, yeah, see McKinnon keeps popping up. All right, before we keep going, eventually there will be fans at Levi Stadium. I think sooner rather than later. I think probably by the next home game, maybe the Rams game. Hopefully, although they're in California, which has been very strict so far. Maybe not the next couple of games, but eventually. 
Some of you will get to go to a game. So pick up a 49er official face mask right now. PetSports.com forward slash 49 mask. Link down below in the description box. We're up to 30% off right now. There's the two pack. This is my favorite, the three pack. The one right there in the middle to me looks absolutely fantastic. You got multiple kids, maybe multiple girlfriends. How about a four pack right here to share with everybody? Fun for the whole family. You go ahead and look good. Rep your mask. Stay safe and uh, rep the 49ers again. ChatSports.com forward slash 49 mask down below in the description box. Now, before we keep going, follow me on Twitter, at Real Thomas Mott. You guys see me right down here? This is where I talk a lot of 49er stuff, so follow me, at Real Thomas Mott. You see that? Click that right there. Let's see. V uh, Vamasi says, playoffs still possibility? Yes, 100%. It's an expanded playoff year. If they don't win the division, which right now not looking very good because Seattle looks absolutely fantastic. I keep saying that. The Seahawks are very good, even though you don't want to admit it, but they still are pretty good. We have to be honest with ourselves. Seattle, Russell Wilson, probably an MVP. You can get a wild card spot. A lot of wild card spots are out there for the picking. All you got to do is get in the big dance. Anything can happen. We've seen that year in and year out to be with six seeds, fifth seeds, fourth seeds. They can make runs here. I think they're definitely still a playoff team. We're four weeks in. If they lose to the Dolphins, maybe we'll have this conversation, but I don't think they will. They'll be three and two moving on to the Ram game. Anything can happen. Don't abandon the Niners just yet. Eric says, let's see, Eric says, should the Niners release Trent Taylor and Pettis? Okay, you know, every offseason I make the predictions. I talk about which player is going to end up being good, who's trending up, my breakout stars. These were both breakout stars, especially Trent Taylor, who told us week in and week out how great he's going to be. The next West Welker, they said. Trent, does he have a catch? I, 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 just give me a stat. Does, does Trent Taylor even, has he even caught a football yet? I'm seeing him out there. He's running routes. They're not throwing in the football. He's not getting open. Taylor's been an absolute bust so far this year. And I don't even know if Pettis has a catch either. I saw him field punts the other day on Sunday night. Bad. They've been awful. They won't release him yet because you need wide receivers because obviously people are injured. But, man, these are not long-term answers at wide receiver. They've been absolutely disappointing. I can't believe how bad Trent Taylor has been. He's been, he's been horrible. He's been absolutely horrible. I'm going to get all riled up here about Trent Taylor. Yeah, yeah good question. Not as you uh, a cornerback. There isn't one. I'm telling you. Again, guys, when you're asking about free agents, there are very few names that if I read them out right now on the available free agents that you would be going, oh, yeah, I know who that is. It's nobody's. They are rolling with what they have. And they like what they have, right? Mosley, Witherspoon are going to come back. Sherman's going to be back next week. Barrett's been very, very good. Johnson's holding down holding de down the fourth. Corner's not been a real issue. Watch the Sunday game again. Carson Wentz didn't do much besides one good touchdown pass. And a couple of runs. I mean, that was basically it. It's not a it's not a cornerback issue right now in San, in San Francisco. It's a injury issue. And a lot of those guys are cornerbacks, three of which missed last game. They're going to hopefully be back sooner rather than later. 